This past Saturday, David Benavidez delivered an impressive performance as he defeated Demetrius Andre by way of six round stoppage, okay? Demetrius Andre was a very tough competitor as he had success early on, but Benavidez was able to take over and dominate down the stretch. This matchup was designed to be an elimination bout in which the winner will be the next in line to face undisputed superweight middleweight champion Canelo Alvarez. David Benavidez dominates Andre, but will Canelo make the match? Or will he make more excuses? What's going on, y'all? Much love, peace, and blessings. It's been a while since I've been on the channel. I'm glad to be back, making a comeback. And uh, we're going to start dropping some videos, man. I got a lot to talk about. We had, uh, we had some things we had to do, man. We had to do some soul searching. We had to go out the country. <laughs> we had to spend some time with family. You know what I'm saying? We, we had to do some things, man, to get ourselves right, man. And uh, I'm just glad to be back. I had to get myself in a mental place. And uh, But uh, it was a very inter entertaining fight, excuse me, on uh, Saturday where uh, Andre moved up in weight to fight um, Benavidez. And we know Benavidez is a tough fighter, man. The dude got a lot of heart, man. He got a lot of toughness and grit, you know. And uh, he's just one of those type of fighters that... You just, you know, you don't mind watching fight. You know, he's very entertaining, very interesting to see. You just know he's going to uh, end up hurting his opponents at some point in the fight. And um, Andre, man, I mean, he did pretty well coming on in, in the first, you know, few rounds of the fight. I thought he, you know, he showed some, some of what he's made of. But it's one of them things where it's like you just knew that uh, Benavidez was going to eventually... <laughs> track him down man and, and start to put some punishment on him and that's exactly what happened um but not only this fight we've seen you know benavidez in past fights where he's pretty much shown that he's he's that type of fighter man he kind of shown that he got that hood in him he got that he got that dog in him you know what i'm saying and eventually he going he going to uh, start to walk his fighters down um they like to call him the sweet science killer <laughs> Cause you could you could definitely have some game, man. You could definitely have some boxing skill and come in this fight. Think you're gonna uh, outbox him? We've seen it time and time again uh, in fights where I think he fought. Who was the guy he fought first? He fought not first, but you know what I'm trying to say. Back in the day, I think it was 2019. He fought Jaylion Love. Um, got a KO in that one. That was quick. But then he went on to fight Anthony Durrell. Okay, this was on the undercard of I think Spence Porter um, in Los Angeles. And you can tell uh, Anthony Durrell is, he's a sweet science type of a fighter. Very slick, um, you know, very, very skilled boxer. Make guys miss, you know, counter punch real well. Um, he's, he, even after that fight, he's went on to get uh, a couple of vicious K or a vicious KO with an uppercut and some other wins that he's done. But um, he, he got David Lemieux up out of there. And then when you seen him step in the ring with Caleb Plant, that was another uh, situation where a lot of people thought that he might get outboxed in that fight, you know what I mean? But he was able to basically uh, walk down the boxer and, and eventually hurt him, man. And uh, he ended up winning that unanimous decision because he was able to just put so much punishment and, and, and keep the ring generalship and coming forward on it. But, you know, Will Canelo, you know, we know Canelo's fighting style is different. Sometimes Canelo can be strategic with the way he do his thing. And other times he can walk forward, man, and really punish his opponents, man. Um, but if I'm, you know, Canelo Alvarez, do I take that fight with Benavidez? You know, do I take it? I know uh, down here in this article, uh, they made a point where we seen after the Triple G, the third fight, uh, I think he won a unanimous decision over Triple G. Um, but when he was asked about fighting Benavidez, you know, he started to basically go and say, that um, Benavidez hasn't quite fought nobody like that yet. You know what I mean? He says, guys, always, I say this, you know that video and wherever you put whatever you want. And this is him speaking not that great English. <laughs> but uh, he says, when I say I don't want to fight Mexican, it's because I represent Mexico and that's why. But I don't care. I fight anybody my entire life. And he says, whether, whether you think I don't want to fight uh, Benavidez, he says, I hear his dad talking a lot of shit, but look, he's accomplished nothing. One single champion, Anthony Durrell. So this could be one of those situations where he feels as though 
you know, Benavidez hasn't fought enough opponents, you know, and he does he hasn't built himself up enough to where it's gonna be worth it. Uh, but I think the majority of you guys watching uh, feel like this probably could be a duck, you know what I mean? And it wouldn't be the first time that Canelo has been accused of ducking and, and picking and choosing fights. But um, we've seen Benavidez time and time again moving up the ladder, uh, you know, putting on some pretty impressive performances. We've seen this time and time again. And uh, the guy uh, just looks dangerous over and over again, man. He's got a lot of height on him, a lot of reach. He fights like a madman, and he's got a lot of power, man. So, you know, is this one of them situations where Canelo Alvarez just sees how dangerous of a fight this is, man? Or is it one of them situations where we know Canelo is just trying to fight for the money, and he just feels as though, um, you know what I'm saying, this may not be worth his while, you know what I mean? I don't see why it wouldn't be. They're both Mexican fighters. They both have a large fan base. Um, of course, Canelo's fan base is larger, but... Um, you know, Benavidez has made a name for himself over time. You know, he's the way he's been punishing guys. Uh, he looks like almost as though he's looking unstoppable. You know what I mean? And, that, and that's not to say that he is, but the way he's been going about his fights, man, um, doesn't matter how much boxing skill you got. Um, he, he's going to eventually overpower you, walk you down, walk through your punches and, um, and get you out of there, man. So is that one of them situations where y'all see Canelo ducking? You know, is this one of these things where he knows the dangers of this fight and would like to, you know, allow Benavidez to basically build himself up, you know, fight some more fighters? Um, I know I've seen um, him talking about going up and wait to possibly fight, um, you know, Dimitri Bivol. And we know we've seen Bivol actually already beat Canelo, you know what I mean? So does he move up to 175 pounds to try to go and... Um, you know, maybe get that that fight and possibly beat him. You know what I mean? It seems like that Canelo fight for Benavidez is one of those torch passing fights. You know what I mean? One of those fights to basically take over the Mexican fan base and, and move forward into the future as you know the the next big Mexican star. Um, that's pretty much how I see it going. Um, but do I think that fight could happen? You know, I, if it does happen, I think it won't happen soon. I think Canelo would go some other routes first. Um, but could that be one of Canelo's last fights or something like that before he retired? I think it's very possible. You know what I mean? Um, I think he, he definitely could fight him. Um, I didn't too much like the Jamel Charlo fight. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't I didn't like that whole situation. I mean, in my personal opinion, when he fought, when Jamel fought uh, Canelo, it looked it extremely, extremely uh, fake. Like it looks like he, uh, you know, just took a check, or one of them situations where they called his number, man. And he had to go do it. He had to go catch that L. But <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what it looked like, on my opinion. Uh, he looked like he couldn't even really fight like he wanted to fight, and he had to lose. That's what it looked like to me, you know, for from a financial situation. But um, you guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. If you're new to the channel, feel free. To subscribe to the channel you know what i'm saying I, you, know, I'm, you know you're welcome to be here and um we'll try to make some more videos here coming up shortly man and i uh, really appreciate everybody for checking in we are starting to get back on the channel we are going to start to try to get in here and do some news articles we're going to talk about boxing of course and we're also going to talk about any and everything under the sun man and we're going to try to stay consistent this time i promise everybody that's been subscribed to me for a while and you guys wondering where i've been at or just don't care i understand but I appreciate you guys' patience and everything that your boy been through over the years, man. I just be struggling, man. I be going through some stuff, man. I got to be honest. Um, but I think I think we looking good right now, and I think we we in a good spot, man. So we're going to be all right. And um, appreciate everybody for checking in. That's all I got for this video. Uh, we'll be back with more here shortly. So uh, y'all stay tuned. Peace.